Hi, welcome back. I'm Mrs. Wilson. Yesterday, we worked with writing multiplicative comparison word problems, and we worked with bar models to find the unknown. Today, we're going to solve problems that are a as times as many problem like yesterday, except we have to find a missing factor. We're still solving multiplicative comparison word problems, but this time, the product is not the unknown. Hey, this sounds like a job for division. And if you remember fact families, that's going to be real helpful for you. Go ahead and get your student work text open to page 131 or a piece of paper. And you'll need a pencil, of course. Go ahead and pause while you gather up those supplies. All right, we're going to start by making sense of the problem. So I'm going to read and you follow along. Juan finds three times as many shells at the beach as Jeremy finds. Juan finds 24 shells. Write and solve an equation to find the number of shells Jeremy finds. Hmm. Go ahead and pause and write down what you think this problem is about. Well, I thought it sounded like the problem was about seashells. How about you? Let's go ahead and read it again. Juan finds three times as many shells at the beach as Jeremy finds. Juan finds 24 shells. Write and solve an equation to find the number of shells Jeremy finds. Hmm, what are we trying to find out in this problem? Pause now and write down what we're trying to find out. Did you have something like we need to find out how many shells Jeremy finds and we're going to have to write an equation for that? Good job. Now I want you to read it the third time and I want you to write down what the important information is. You can pause now. For the important information, did you have something like Juan finds 24 shells and that 24 is three times as many as Jeremy finds? Great work. We are ready. Ready to do what? Now it's your turn to work this problem out on your own in your work text. I want you to think about how this problem is similar to the ones we did yesterday. Remember how we used English to write the math equations? And remember how we used a box or a question mark to represent the unknown? Hey, take a look at this math toolkit. You can use any of these tools here. There's counters and cups, number lines, multiplication models, grid paper, and sticky notes. Go ahead and use any of those which might be helpful for you. And really important, friends, if you can think of a second way to solve this problem, solve it that way too. All right, go ahead and pause now and solve the problem on your own, and I'll see you back here when you press play again. I want you to look back at your work, and I want you to think about this question. Why did you choose this strategy? There were many different ways to solve the problem. What made your way a good way to solve it? Maybe you made a picture or a model that was clear and easy to understand. Maybe you found a way that was especially efficient. I want you to find a family member and share with them how you solved the problem. Maybe you can use the suggestion on this slide when you're explaining. You could say something like, I knew such and such, so I such and such. Go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're finished. All right. Let's look at some other ways to solve the problem now. And as we go through them, maybe some of the ways are similar to the way you solved it, and maybe there's some different ways to think about it. So when I was looking at it, I read the problem. Juan finds three times as many shells at the beach as Jeremy finds. Juan finds 24 shells. Write and solve an equation to find the number of shells Jeremy finds. Well, I saw right there in the problem, it told me that Juan has 24 shells. That's known. So I wrote it down. Then I saw the problem told me Juan has three times as many as Jeremy. 
Now, does that mean that Juan has three? No, he has three times as many as Jeremy. So I wrote a three and a time sign. And I don't know what to times it by. That's Jeremy's number. That's unknown. So I put a question mark there. But notice that I did write Jeremy's name over that question mark, right? Because that question mark represents Jeremy's seashell number. And when I find out how many shells Jeremy has, and then I multiply that by three, it's going to give me 24. Yeah, the number of shells that Juan has. So I wrote what I knew as an equation. And again, I used that question mark as the unknown factor. So I have the 24 equals three times question mark. Okay. Then I remembered. When you have a multiplication problem with an unknown factor, you can write it like a division problem so that your question mark, your unknown, is by itself on the other side of the equal sign. Now, that's really important. Look real closely at my last row here. 24 divided by 3 equals question mark. See how it's different from what's written right above it? 24 equals 3 times the question mark? You probably already know what the question mark equals. So let's not worry about that. You probably already solved it. But I want you to look at how we went from writing the equation first as a multiplication problem, and then we switched it around and wrote it as a division problem. I want you to pause for a bit and think out loud about how those two equations are similar and how they're different. You might have said that they are the same because the unknown, the question mark, equals the same number in both equations. Yep, that's good thinking. You might have said that they're different because one equation is multiplication and the other is division. Yep, that is very true. And you might have said it reminded you of fact families. Yeah, you've seen these before, right? Let's re read through these together. Ready? 3 times 8 equals 24. 8 times 3 equals 24. 24 divided by 8 equals 3. And 24 divided by 3 equals 8. Great. Well, remember way back when I asked you to share your thinking with a family member and to use a sentence starter like, I knew such and such, so I such and such? Well, here, I knew 24 divided by 3 equals 8, so I knew Jeremy has 8 seashells. Let's take a look at another way of working it out. You can use a bar model to help understand the problem. Jeremy finds one group of shells. Juan finds three times as many shells as Jeremy. I should have point to that red box. That represents Jeremy's shells. Do we know how many Jeremy found? No. That's why there's a question mark in the box. It's unknown. Let's move to Juan's boxes. He has, count them with me, one, two, three boxes. Now I want you to point on the bar model where it shows me how many seashells. Seashells now, not boxes. How many seashells Juan found? Are you pointing to the 24? I knew you were. Now, here comes the tricky question. Do, do you have your seatbelt buckled for this one? Okay. Why does Juan have three blue boxes? I'll pause while you think about that. Okay. Did you say Juan has three boxes because he has three times as many seashells as Jeremy? Great work. And maybe you pointed to the words in that sentence near the top. Juan finds 
three times as many shells as Jeremy. So to find the number of shells Jeremy has, we have to divide Juan's total of 24 by three. And that's how we found out that Jeremy has eight seashells. Now, remember this? Yep, it's that fact family again. I highlighted eight times three equals 24 because the eight is how many shells we now know that Jeremy has. The three is because the problem told us Juan finds three times as many shells as Jeremy has. And we knew from the very beginning that Juan had how many shells? Yeah, 24. Okay, with that in mind, let's talk through the other highlighted fact family. Okay, ready? Let's look at Juan's three boxes. And we know that those three boxes together represented how many shells? 24, uh-huh. So Juan's 24 shells divided among those three boxes means one box represents eight shells. One box represents eight shells. Okay, the 24 divided by three equals eight. And that's the easy part of this problem, isn't it? The part we're trying to wrap our brains around is understanding how we have to use division to solve this. With that in mind, let's look at another way to think about this. You already know that Jeremy has eight seashells. We solved that a long time ago. So let's really work at understanding how this word problem, even though it has the word times in it, is actually a division problem. Okay. It says you can use the bar model to make an equation to help understand the problem. Three times Jeremy's shells equals Juan's shells. What did they do here that's different from the way we've worked it out already? Pause here and talk about that out loud. Did you say that you're, you, they're using words here? Mm -hmm. And maybe you even noticed that they were color-coded words, right? Exactly. All right, remember this example of mine from earlier that Juan has 24, and that's equal to three times however many Jeremy has? Say, it's almost the same as that equation we just read at the top of the page. So I'll just turn it around. Let's turn it around. There, I just turned it around. So let's read through um, my bubbles here. Three times that question mark, which represents Jeremy's shells, equals 24. Hey, take a look at what's written right here on the slide, right above it. Three times S equals 24. S? Where did that S come from? Hmm, I notice the S is red. Point to something else on this slide that's red. Uh -huh. Huh? Are you pointing to the red words, Jeremy's shells? So that red S in the equation represents Jeremy's shells. Shells, S, oh, I got it, we got it. All right, friends, I think you're ready now. Now it's time for you to answer the seven connected questions on your own. Take your time, and I want you to refer back to the work we did, already did on the model at examples. That'll help you make sense of the, pro of the questions. And I want you to notice for number five here, you not only have to fill in that blank, you need to write an equation too. Here's your last connected question. And when you've finished all seven of these connected questions, have a grown-up check over your work. And then you can answer the apply it questions on your own. So the apply it questions are numbers eight and number nine. Remember to look back at what we did together today to help you. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I just love math. I want you to be persistent problem solvers, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Kiss your brain.